Hello, and welcome to The Next Big Star. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my guests for today's show are Sally Olson and Ned Mills, and this is our premiere show, so thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks for Good. having us. All right. I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to ask our guest. I'm going to start with you, Sally. Can okay. you give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Uh, well, I'm originally from Vermont, and I moved to Las Vegas um, almost three years ago. Uh, I've been performing as Karen Carpenter since about uh, 2015, and I debuted the show, of course, in Vermont and um, performed in the Northeast as well as um, at the Triad Theater in New York City. And it was about that time in um, 2017 when I did the show at the Triad that I had already started thinking about how I wanted to um, evolve the show and that I was going to be wanting somebody to play the role of Richard Carpenter. Because originally the show uh, was, um, it's more, it was more of a one-woman uh, show, cabaret show kind of version. Okay. And I, was, I would go in and out of character during when I was singing the songs, I would be in character as Karen, but of course, in between songs, I'd be talking about the history of the Carpenters. And at that point, I, I realized that I, I wanted to change the show so that I would be in character 100% of the time, and that I wanted to start looking for somebody to play the role of Richard. And uh, I met an individual who was a big Carpenters fan who came to that show in New York City, and he said that he had some ideas and would be in touch. And um, lo and behold, he got in touch with me a couple months later and said that he had a a very good childhood friend who lives in Las Vegas, former showgirl, and uh, that she would be expecting my call, but they both had put their heads together and, and thought that it would be a really uh, good idea for me to come out to Las Vegas and audition for Legends in Concert. Oh, okay. And uh, so that that's that was the original um, draw for me to come out to Las Vegas. So I, I made my first trip to Las Vegas in January of 2018. And um, that's I met Ned on that trip as he was one of the people who I was lined up to sit in with, and he was the first one, and he was also the last. Okay, <laughs> so that's great. In a the nutshell, history, yeah. 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 <laughs> but so, where did you grow up, though? Oh, uh, well, I I grew up in Rutland, Vermont. It's kind of more in the southern, mid to southern part of the state, mm -hmm. and I I went to Middlebury College, which is just up up the road, up Route Seven, about forty five minutes. And um, I, I spent some time studying a, abroad in Paris because I was a, a French major and studio wow. art major. Okay. So that that was amazing spending time. Yeah, we in talked Paris about it a little bit before yeah. going on the show, and, and you actually are a painter. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 We might need you down the road. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brothers and sisters. I have one sister. She's younger, um, two and a half years younger, and she her name is Leah. Uh, and she got um she actually got married a couple years ago so okay. no longer in Olson Madison is her last name you're quite a bit younger than than I am and I'm assuming quite a bit younger a little bit younger than Ned is just a little bit um <laughs> I I don't know your age but you look a lot younger <laughs> so my question that is I you probably did not did you grow up on the Carpenters listening to the Carpenters um I I did mainly because I I always preferred the music of the 60s and 70s. Okay. For, for, I was just drawn to that versus what was going on at the time. Which was, I was a, a child of the 80s and the 90s, but I wasn't at all into the, the music of that era. I would only listen to oldies radio stations and I uh, wore primarily only vintage clothes when I was in high school. So those affinities that I had then, it's interesting how that ended up informing what would become this show. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of natural for me. Okay. And plus, I listened to a little bit of a, your music before we went on air, and I'm just blown away at how much you sound just like Karen Carpenter. That really just gave me chills. So, you Thank know. You. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Ned, give us a little bit about your background. This is Ned Mills. Yeah, I'm from the East Coast, uh, from North Carolina. I was born in Charleston, South Carolina, and was raised in North Carolina. And like Sally, we both grew up in rural areas. Uh, she grew up on, what, 40 acres, right? Mm -hmm. Raised in a carriage stop house uh, from 1810. It was a, originally yeah. a, a carriage stop yeah. uh, inn or a house on the Green Mountain Trail. Wow. It was built and, in 1820. And I grew up on uh, 23 acres in North Carolina near near Wilmington, near the beach area. But you didn't know and, each other until Las Vegas, though. Yeah, we, we, we just met uh, three years ago. Yeah. In fact, uh, a couple of days ago was our three-year anniversary oh, of wow. when we first met. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so, yeah, I, I grew up, you know, country boy in the South. My accent's worn off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it comes mine back too. When I want to charm somebody. 
<laughs> and uh, what part of the South are you from? You're well, from? actually, I grew up in Missouri and Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, and mainly in Oklahoma, they have a pretty thick accent. Very similar. Yeah, I went to school yeah, in Texas, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a country boy. Grew up, uh, my first job was uh, driving a tractor in a tobacco field when I was seven oh years goodness. old, 50 wow. cents an hour. And I drove a school bus when I was in high school. And, wow. But I've always been into music. It's, it's kind of was pretty much established. So what was your path getting to where you are now? You know, you know um, like, did you study, you know, I know you said you've been mm-hmm. into music. We talked a little bit again before we went on air and yeah. you have a cousin who's created a. Yeah. Yeah. Music, program. music is, is, uh, I think genetically was more on my mom's side of the family. Although my mother and father are both in heaven now, but they're both really talented with music. My grandmother was a silent movie pianist. She would watch wow. the screen and play, you know, the, 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 the silent films. And, uh, yeah, my cousin, Ron Grant, uh, developed the world's first computer program to synchronize music and film and got an Academy Award and an Emmy for it. And uh, said, anyway, that I kind of wanted to follow along those lines. But, yeah, since I was like four or five years old, uh, my father was he wasn't a professional musician, but he loved to play the piano at home. And I'm like, Daddy, I want to play. And so he would play something and give me a couple of little ditties to follow along with him. And he realized, hey, he's got a pretty good sense of rhythm. And they got me into piano lessons when I was in the second grade. And uh, I was torn for many years between piano and trumpet. My okay. my grandfather uh, handed down an old trumpet that my dad got me to play. And he said, I'll, uh, I'll give you a dollar if you learn how to play My Country Tis of Thee. <laughs> oh, God wow. Save the Queen. I went, okay. I don't want to learn the trumpet. I wanted my dollar, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I learned it, and I played both. I played uh, trumpet in a, the marching band and concert band in high school. I continued to play piano, although I only took four years of lessons. And when I got to college, I was d- debating that I want to go into, I, I love mathematics, engineering, and music. And, well, with music, you only have to count the four. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. but <laughs> So I decided to go into music. I was a trumpet major yeah. at East Carolina University for two years. And then I took the plunge and I went to North Texas State University in Denton, Texas. And uh, did that uh, for a couple of years. Took a year off. Did cruise ships. Saw the world. Oh. Uh, went so off. did you know uh, someone named Jackie Beer? No. She used to... Uh, she was booking people oh, okay. on, the, on the cruise ship. Yeah. No, it, it was a different agency, but I was starting out playing in a uh, jazz trio. We went up to Alaska first, then we crossed into Japan. I decided to take a year away from college and come back. And uh, it was really interesting. I think the most fascinating part was China. I went to the Great Wall and saw that. And then China in 1986 was very different than it is today. Okay. It was bicycles yeah. everywhere, very oh, few cars. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was really a thrill to see that. I did it for seven months and finished in Australia, flew back home and finished my last year of college. How did you end up in Las Vegas? So um, when I, I was kind of midlifing when I hit the ripe old age of 35 saying, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> and uh, I guess we shouldn't talk numbers too much, but um, and I, everyone kept talking about Las Vegas. On my 35th birthday, I was music director for American Hawaii Cruise Lines. Okay. And I called home, and they wished me happy birthday. And I said, you're 35. What are you going to do? Have you ever thought about going to Vegas? I'm like, why does everyone keep mentioning Vegas all day long? Mm-hmm. And uh, a piano player on the ship uh, said, yeah, I'm from Vegas. You, you should come visit. You could stay at my place. And so I did. And uh, the rest is history. I got the bug, and I moved here. 20 years ago and i've been here ever since okay so why how did so i know you you came back from the east you came from Mm -hmm. the east to las vegas and you already had the idea of creating a a tribute to the carpenters because i know you you literally sound like karen carpenter Mm -hmm. so when you met ned did it enter your mind? Let's do this, or I know you're going to do the tribute show. You said with uh, what? What was the tro- the show you were going to do? Well, uh, the show that I had started doing was it was a tribute to the Carpenters, but the show was very different in the sense that it was. But without the a, Richard part. Yeah, of it. it was a one woman cabaret show. I would you know sometimes have just a pianist or a pianist, um, uh, bass and drums, but I wasn't in character. Okay. But although I would, oh, okay. I would wear the the hairstyles and and the costumes, but I hadn't made that 
um, leap yet to being 100% character. I mean, there's there's no right or wrong. People do tribute shows in a variety of different ways. Right. But I got I, I, it didn't take me very long to get to the point that I realized I want to do this in character, and I you know want it to be totally authentic, and and with that, I mean, it would require to have a Richard Carpenter. <laughs> so I had been so another. I mean, I had been performing as Karen for a couple, almost three years before I met Ned. But um, shortly before I met him, I had already envisioned how I wanted the show to change, um, and that um, involves recreating their 1976 touring show. Okay. Uh, because, in my opinion, and it also became Ned's opinion too, that that was the most um, entertaining part of their career. That's when they were at their zenith. Um, and there was a lot of variety. It wasn't them just doing ballad after ballad. It showcased... Um, Richard's classical chops, Karen's drum feature, um, um, a tribute to Spike Jones that they did a parody of "Close to You." Do you do? Do you play drums? Mm-hmm. Oh my yeah. gosh! <laughs> so Ned, I don't think there was such a thing as the Richard Carpenter tribute type thing. So how did you figure out that you two could work together on this? It, I think it kind of evolved. In fact, when we first met, she was wearing a Carpenter's T-shirt. You okay, know, and she was known for that and um when we first met we met at the uh tap the tap house. house yeah three years ago and um first it was you know we we became a couple and um our common bond of course is music and at the, at the time i was more of a gigging musician uh i headlined with my own show called piano follies on cruise ships uh i would fly out and do a show and come back and I would I would say maybe eight or nine months into it, it, it kind of evolved. She would sit in with me at, at, on my gigs. I was performing a lot at the Rampart and uh, Addison's Lounge, and come up here and do some songs. And we would do the you know close to you, and we've only just begun and superstar. And um, we got a call from an agent say I I have a call. How would you like to do a a, a corporate event? In California is a duo doing the Carpenters. And we're like, I, you know, we've been talking about it. We've been guests on a variety show hinting at this. Let's go ahead and take the plunge. So we went to studio and I, a lot of the stuff wasn't even published. I had to make the arrangements and, and record tracks and so forth. And we put it together. And so we debuted that October of... Uh, well, actually, 20- that was still, it was, that was like a hybridized yeah. version of the old show with yeah. some of the new show. Yeah. And then a couple of months yeah. later, we kind of, without even the formal discussion, we both came to the same, <laughs> ex- we both came to the same conclusion that, you know, let's do a recreation. I was listening to their 1976 UK tour video. We saw it on YouTube. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if, if we did this and that? And we kind of mutually came to the same conclusion at the same time. But did you think that you would fit the bill for Richard Carpenter, though, up um, to that point? At first, at first not. Um, first, I was like, well, maybe I could help her with her career as Karen. Right. And, you know, uh, Richard's taller than me. You know, we have technology called elevator shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, although I, I am a jazz pianist, I was very naive about the um, the. The, the talent and the complexity of Richard Carpenter, he's probably one of the most underappreciated yes. artists of the 20th century. It, it, uh, people don't understand. Uh, the Carpenters would have been very much different without Richard. He's the one who put the arrangements together. Well, originally, mm-hmm. Karen wasn't part of the band. Yeah, well, when he, they had their garage band originally, I think they brought her in one day. And well, they, the they, very early, the trio, the earliest was the Richard Carpenter trio. And she'd play drums, and um, Wes Jacobs played jazz tuba, <laughs> and they won the the Hollywood Battle Battle of the Bands of back the bands. in um, I think 1965, 66. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they started mm-hmm. uh, shopping around with their demo and what have you, and they ran into uh, they approached uh, Herb Alpert from A and M Records. He's the A of A and M Records, and uh, he gave them a chance, and their debut album. Um, they rechanged a the cover. It was uh, called Offering. It was called Offering, but the, the yeah. cover was not very not flattering. <laughs> and and uh, they, they repackaged it, it as the, Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. well, but their first song. breakout hit, of course, was uh, close was to Close to You. Mm-hmm. And We've Only Just Begun was a, a bank commercial, I believe, right? Yeah, it was and, for Cro- Crocker National Bank. Yeah. Richard so, happened to, to yeah. see the commercial, and he's like, yeah. wow, that would be a great song for us to do. And then he 
recognized Paul Williams' voice singing the song, and so he called Paul Williams up. He's like, "Please tell me that there's more verses to the song." And so it was. So, so that, we had that's noticed that, that happened. Of, of all the the tributes out there with a lot of love and respect to him, uh, we realized there was a niche that hadn't been filled. Of uh, number one, having having a Richard, which again I had very big shoes to fill, not only literally but right. musically. He he's an accomplished classical pianist, jazz pianist. I had to learn the material, um, you know, the hairstyle. I had to grow my hair a little longer and get the '70s <laughs> haircut. You know, yeah. I usually do the spike. For those who know Zoe Bowie, that kind of style is okay. what I used to do. And and so um, it was a work in progress. And uh, we took baby steps with it. And then we got the call to uh, perform at the Carpenter's 50th anniversary wow. reunion. Mm-hmm. That and was that, a, for, um, April of yeah 2019. Yeah. So. so it's a young yeah. show. And we took the plunge and did it. Brought, I put the band together. Mm-hmm. We rehearsed. And um, now we have three versions. We, do, we still occasionally perform in a cabaret version of our show, particularly with COVID going on in smaller intimate venues. But... We love it when we bring in our, our talent, our guitarist and mm-hmm. our sax player and our drummer. You know, we were talking earlier, too, about how when I was growing up, the Carpenters were huge mm-hmm. in the 70s and early 80s. And and yet nobody wanted to admit they listened to the Carpenters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how did they sell 100 million albums if no one listened to them? <laughs> So yeah. it was kind of interesting. That's what was really unique about Karen Carpenter's voice, too, is that she had this, just a soft, mellow voice, and it just melted you. I mean, you know, and like you were saying earlier, Ned, you know, even the macho guys didn't want to really pretend they wanted to listen to it, but mm-hmm. they, you know, it was because their girlfriends wanted them to hear it. Right. But we know that everyone really wanted to hear that music. So Yeah. You know, yeah it's interesting to you see know. people that would listen to Metallica and ACDC, and then it quietly at night, they're... Trying to not cry. <laughs> Glass of wine crying to Karen Carpenter. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But but the other thing about the Carpenters, too, is that not only did they have, you know, all these beautiful, powerful ballads, some of them that Richard composed, and some of them he'd collaborate with great writers such as John Bettis. Um, you know, they were inspired a lot by Burt Bacharach and the mm, Beatles, the yeah. Beach Boys. Bee Gees. And the Bee Gees. Mm. Um, but also uh, after their early tours they uh decide what can we do to give this show a big shot in the arm entertainment wise and visually wise so they brought in some consultants right they brought in um, uh, joe layton and um ken and mitzi welch yeah and so that's when it, they decided particularly by the mid 70s 75 76 that was the pinnacle of their career because most of the big hits were out and they had karen doing a big drum solo and rich would do a classical feature and they had some tongue-in-cheek comedy, and it brought out a dimension of the Carpenters that people wouldn't know unless they saw them live. And so we pride ourselves on probably the only Carpenters tribute out there that brings that to the forefront. If, if anyone didn't have the opportunity of seeing them live, some of us were too young, the only chance to really capture that energy of their live uh, performance abilities would be to see what we did. Mm-hmm. Well, I wasn't too young, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind admitting. Yeah, um, we have a, another guest here with us. Um, mm-hmm. You can see her on camera. You're not going to be able to see her on the audio I have to portion. Bring her up a little bit, but yeah. who do we have here? Yeah, you want to introduce arms? her? Sure, yeah, this, this is Lola. Okay, she's um, t- tomorrow she'll be seven months old. Oh yeah, that's right. And it's her um, birthday, and she she's a she's a rescue. Yeah. Her, uh-huh. Got her from Wagging Tails Rescue here in Vegas. Cutie pie. She's yeah. a real cutie pie. Only yeah. four pounds. She fell in love with you in minutes yeah, before yeah, the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's. We'll have to do another type show where we can bring our doggies on. <laughs> yeah. she, she she loves people. Yeah, yeah she, she is does. cutie. So, mm-hmm. I want to go into a little bit because when you played a little bit of your, I actually thought that you were just lip syncing to Karen Carpenter. I know that sounds stupid. You're doing a, tri- you know, a tribute yeah. band. No, that, I mean, that's like the best compliment, actually. Yeah, but I'm thinking yeah. that cannot be you. Um, do you ever feel like there's some kind of spiritual connection? And Because I do believe that. I believe that we all have some kind of energy out there. And it just, oh, my gosh, it really did make me have mm-hmm. chills. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. And it's like the, the path for me um, to end up doing the show was I always call it really like it was a happy accident because I didn't wake up one day and say, I want to do a, a tribute to the Carpenters. It was more of I had started 
um, training professionally professionally singing and uh, back in 2009 2010 and then a few years later I decided that I wanted to do a one-woman show because um, I had been auditioning for things and some some things I would get others not but uh, it was more of not really being so as passionate about other people's projects but I felt that if I could develop my own thing then you know why not and it it would be it would be my own so when you um, took voice lessons mm-hmm. though cuz you said you took vocal lessons mm-hmm. did someone steer you in that direction like did someone recognize that voice in you I think it uh well it, it was around the time that I it wasn't until I decided that I wanted to put together a woman woman show and that it, and it originally had no specific focus that then we started reading through music and at some point started reading through the carpenter's music and it it was one of those aha moments and yes yeah, so it was the so recognition did someone, that yeah, my voice did, had but that I, quality but did someone mm-hmm. say to you you sound just like Karen Carpenter i mean like did you have a vocal co- coach or someone in the family saying that's remarkable yeah it was the vocal coach yeah um, okay. cuz we were looking at uh, different possibilities of what this show mm-hmm. would be and then um of course you know reading through the Carpenter's music, and yes, he recognized that my voice had that same vocal quality, and so that's what I decided to go with that. Yeah. And it was supposed to... It's a good to, thing you did. I know. It, changed, it literally changed it's nice changed to bring life. that back. Well, plus, yeah. is, you know, it's really great when we can we can recognize... I'm, I'm a... You know, I represent authors as well, and I always have, when I do an event, I, I, I have a, a yearly event. We couldn't do it this year because of COVID, but I, Aspects of Writing, it's another show I have, that... Um, salutes authors and we always do a tribute to past authors we keep their books going as well and we actually mm-hmm. sell their books at these events so I'm, I'm one of those who believes that we have to keep the spirit going of someone not that they're going to go away by any means because their albums still sell today but it's just great to have someone here on planet earth who can represent that yeah I, and that just reminds me i kind of got off the topic there but going back to if i have some personal or spiritual connection with with Karen or the music um like I said absolutely and um you know early on I couldn't quite pinpoint it except for the fact that I love the music I you know and the more research I did about the Carpenters and Karen I felt that that I really connected with her on on a personal level um uh just you know personality wise and just some of you know her her the struggles that she went through I could really relate to that and just you know had a just a really strong, you know, feeling of connection with her. But more interesting, um, later, um, it was after moving to Las Vegas, and after we we launched the the new version of the show. Um, I think so. Yeah, short, shortly after we participated in the Carpenters' 50th anniversary, some of the people that we met there, um, who are basically car- um, carpenters historians, okay. if you will, um, this one gentleman named Chris May. He suggested that we um, might want to get in touch with a gentleman named Michael Lansing, and Michael Lansing uh, was part of the Carpenters' entourage in 1976. Oh, wow. He was uh, the guy who operated the reel-to-reel recorder on stage, and he was also Karen's personal assistant. And our first show of 2020, we were performing in Banning, California, and Michael Lansing lives in the area, so he attended our show. And ahead of time, we asked him if he would do us the honor of um, being the reel-to-reel operator. Ned built a prop. So we we recreate that moment in the 76 show because that's exactly what Richard did. He would, in the beginning, um, conduct to a a reel-to-reel recorder, kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. For no history, yeah. So Michael, um, he he did that, and it, it was... I, I mean, it was just a really fun and surreal moment, but we've <laughs> we've kept in touch with him and we've had a lot of conversations with him. And uh, one of the things that he's talked about is that he he was very close to Karen. Um, they were really close friends. And when she passed away, um, he that that morning before he actually knew that she had passed away, he he woke up. Um, it was probably about five a.m. and he woke up to hearing Karen singing into his right ear and she was singing um, the lyrics from a, a song for you. We are alone now, but I'm singing this song for you. And that really it, it kind of spooked him, jolted him a bit. Yeah. And so he couldn't go back to sleep. And he went downstairs and started making coffee. 
And a couple hours later on the news was the news that Karen Carpenter had passed away. And it was oh, like, oh my yeah. gosh. So timing wise, um, he felt that that was Karen saying goodbye to him. Yeah. But he says he, he still gets kind of messages from Karen and um, he has a very strong feeling that um, Karen, <laughs> that, that Karen feels that what we are doing, you know, that there's a reason that we are doing what we are doing, carrying on the legacy of, of their music and that she's, you know, given us the official en- nod <laughs> endorsement. <laughs> so that, I mean, that means a lot. And uh, um, I don't know, I have anything to add to no. that? <laughs> no, we can we can hit time out on the editing thing. Jeez, I'm gonna have to watch today. We've never seen her this much. So we we got Lola back in in the arms <laughs> of Ned. <laughs> She's been having a great time here. Yeah, a little too much fun. <laughs> she says, "Well, now I get to get on the microphone." Yeah. Uh, I I wanted to ask you a, a little bit, um, Sally, about um, you were a cross country runner. Is that correct? That's right. Um, in high school, I joined the cross country team. I think my sophomore year, and I did it all through high school um, and it's it's just it became a lifestyle mm-hmm. so know? it's still a lifestyle mm-hmm. for you you still go out there and you jog every day and yeah I don't I mean I don't do races you know I don't I don't do it to you know to be competitive but just where you're too busy now yeah so but yeah. It, it's great with running is a type of exercise where you can you can pretty much do it anywhere you don't have to have a membership to a gym and I love you know getting outside and getting fresh air so it's because you seem very fit so you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. That's good. So, yeah. And I should I even ask you that, Ned? Do you I, participate when she runs? I no, I, I lift a four pound Chihuahua up <laughs> and hold her. Does Chihuahua curls fifty okay. times a day on right. the TV remote? <laughs> okay, so we're not going to see you out there yeah. jogging alone. Not, you know? not okay. too much. Oh, okay. I might right. jiggle rather than jog. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you write your own music at all? Do you write? I, I mean, it's great that you're doing the the, the Karen and, and the Richard Carpenter tribute, but do you ever create your own music? Uh, well, as 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 a duo, uh, we started a project mm-hmm. that uh, we hope to come back to and revisit. Of uh, well, if if Karen was still around, what would she be doing? You know, okay. and mm-hmm. so we put together. We started a project of uh, our first song we took karen carpenter's uh superstar oh. and we gave it a fresh coat of paint where it's where um sally sings it in spanish and in english oh well, that's something that the carpenters they never did that so yeah. it was our way of reimagining and putting a, a new twist, twist on, on it exactly. yeah so we so uh we gave it a, a nice latin flavor so like at the beginning with that light rock beat and said it's more like a bolero with congas what was it? Was the first long da 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 da? Okay. And then on the chorus, don't you remember? You told me we gave it this Latin uh, reggaeton. Boom, 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 boom. You know, and we thought this might be open up a whole new market. For Absolutely, what we're doing. yeah. So, so we we started on that, and uh, there's some other things we plan on doing with that, and maybe videoing us recreating that in the studio similar you remember the way uh, tony bennett and lady gaga would have uh yes v- videos of them recording it and that was the music video yeah, yeah. and on, on the compositionally uh i released a uh, cd back in 1999 called uh, sandcastles it's all original music okay and i was you know this is way pre before my richard carpenter phase and um it was uh, original on the, the light rock side so mm-hmm. maybe that was kind of alluding to where we're going now with it, the business. You know? Well, you said you studied in France. Did you study at the Alliance Française? Uh, I, I studied at, well, Middlebury College has its own, they're a big language school, so they mm-hmm. had their own school abroad in Paris, and that's mainly where I, I took most of my classes. Because I was yeah. wondering, did you ever think about recording any of the music in French? Um well, or how would that certainly, translate? Certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, I will say that yeah. because of her French skills, she learned the Spanish. Excuse me, I had the mic here. Yeah. She learned the Spanish version in like minutes. Right. I don't speak Spanish. Spanish. Oh, you don't speak Spanish. I know. You know, I know several words. Basically, what I learned on Sesame Street as a kid. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I, I <speak laughs> but it's a romance Spanish. language, obviously. <laughs> right. So right. there's yes. some Absolutely. similarities I could. Yeah. I speak more Spanish it. than she does, but she her diction and everything, she just quickly picked up on it. Like, well, that. you know, Connie Francis used to record in like seven or eight languages. Wow. 
Yeah, okay. each one of our songs. Yeah. <laughs> so like, do you have anything you'd like to add? Like, what do we need to know? What's coming up next with you? What's going on? Yeah, well, we, um, during this whole um, pandemic. 10 months mm. <laughs> of pandemic, we've, um, even though we haven't been performing as much, um, we've been keeping very busy with our show. Part of that was getting our Christmas show um, written and off the ground, which we were able to debut this past holiday season, both here in Las Vegas and Texas. Uh, and another project that we've been busy with is some live streaming deals. Okay. And um, we, so our Christmas show was live streamed. It was actually the debut performance was live streamed, so no pressure. <laughs> but um, so that went really well. And then, uh, yeah, Valentine's it was- Valentine's Day, right? Right, that's, um, yeah. right, so our main show that one we we spent about four and a half months um, from videoing to edit to editing our main sh show performance, and that's going to be available on demand through uh, We Are Live Entertainment uh, starting on February fourteenth. So just in time for Valentine's Day. You know, if you hear a little squealing in the background, that's little Lola yeah. playing. <laughs> She's, yeah, she it's all a game to her. And also uh, February twenty fifth, we're at the Italian American Club in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if, if Lola doesn't bite off my fingers, I'll be playing piano. <laughs> so where can we learn more about your work? <laughs> uh, people oh. can go to our website, which is carpenterstributeconcert.com. And then to s see where we're going to be performing, it, just go to the tour page, and there's a list of upcoming dates. All right. Well, I would like to thank you both for being here today. And thank you for listening to The Next Big Star um, with our guests Sally Olson and Ned Mills. Mm -hmm. um, you can learn more about our show by going to allaspectsradionetwork.com or you can go to thenextbigstar.com. And again, this is our premiere show. I thank mm -hmm. you so much for doing this for me today. Uh, so and bringing a little of Lola. Hey, That's Lola, great. Lola, say something. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> yeah, so she, and she's the next little star. So. All right. <laughs> so this is your host, James Kelly, um, saying till next time, you never know when you might become the next big star. So thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.